Hi, my name is Frank Holstein, and I oversee the investment management team at Westpath. My team oversees the management of Westpath's investment funds. It's been an extremely challenging year for both stocks and bonds, the two types of investments that likely comprise a large portion of your retirement or investment account. So why are we seeing such poor market performance, and what will we continue to monitor as we look to the fourth quarter and beyond? First, I want to discuss how we arrived at the current market environment. Let's start with inflation. Everyone is talking about it, but why are levels at generational highs? To explain, we need to think back to the early days of the pandemic. At that time, markets plunged, and very quickly, we saw the US unemployment rate exceed 14%. Governments across the globe took significant measures to address the pain felt by individuals and businesses. The US Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, also took action. The Fed lowered its main interest rate, known as the federal funds rate, so the cost of borrowing money became less expensive. This allowed individuals and businesses to borrow at a very low interest rate, which helps drive economic activity. In addition, Congress deployed widespread fiscal stimulus. This included allocating money to fight the virus, outright cash payments to qualified individuals, and loans and grants to small businesses through the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. These measures largely worked as intended to help mitigate the pandemic crisis in the short term. But we are now feeling residual long-term effects. The government reacted to the virus very quickly and with large fiscal and monetary stimulus, but perhaps we overstimulated and kept interest rates low for too long. Now we're experiencing an undesirable side effect in the form of inflation. A normal rate of inflation is typically 2%, year. Comparatively, in June, we saw annual inflation of over 9%. And in the third quarter, the situation did not improve materially, with August inflation at 8.3% year over year. Things are generally more expensive, from gas to food to housing. You can see in the chart here that items are very disproportionately more expensive. Certain essential groceries, like eggs, are nearly 40% more expensive than they were a year ago. To try and reduce inflation, the US Federal Reserve is now raising interest rates. At the Fed's late August meeting, Jerome Powell announced an additional interest rate increase of 0.75%, bringing the rate to 3.25%. The Fed has increased its overnight borrowing rate by three percentage points since January. This move seeks to temper inflation by increasing the cost of borrowing money. This lowers demand for borrowing, in turn lowering the demand for goods and services, which will likely cool the economy. During the third quarter, US equity markets initially rallied 10% in July. However, from mid-August through quarter end, a bond sell-off ensued, and the S&P 500 stock index fell 16.5%. Market performance for the quarter and year to date can be seen on the screen. As you can see, except for investments in commodities, investors have been unable to avoid negative performance across a wide variety of investment types. Many of you likely invest in our Inflation Protection Fund which has allocated about 10% to commodities. It is unusual for stocks and bonds to both suffer significant losses. Typically, when, Scott, when stocks are experiencing sharp losses, bonds can soften the blow. This chart shows the most recent periods when the S&P 500 stock index declined for the year. It also shows the US bond market performance represented by the Bloomberg US Aggregate Bond Index and the performance for a balanced stock and bond portfolio. As you can see, in seven of the eight years, bonds produced a positive return. This tempered the returns of a balanced portfolio. Unfortunately, both the stock and bond markets at the end of the third quarter reflect investor pessimism about current and near-term economic conditions. 
due largely to high and persistent inflation. This has caused bond yields to surge, which means bond prices moved sharply lower. Despite the gloomy environment for financial assets, U.S. employment conditions remain strong, with unemployment hovering near 50-year lows. Alongside inflation and the ongoing aggressive Fed tightening, we continue to monitor global events that can further impact markets. These events include the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, an energy crisis in Europe, increasing signs of a global recession, U.S. election uncertainty, lower corporate earnings, and potential escalation of tensions between China and the U.S. So what does this mean for you? Here at Westpath, supporting the financial security of our participants and supporting the missions of our institutional investment partners are our highest priorities. There is no exact playbook for what's to come. Uncertainty will persist in the near term. However, we know with time and patience, markets have historically reverted back to their normal cycles, rewarding patient investors. Market underperformance and dislocation are not uncommon. We remain steadfast in our belief that the key to a successful investment program is to remain fully diversified and invested, focused on the long term. Clergy with ministerial pension plan balances should take comfort that much of their projected benefit payments have been shielded from much of the recent downturn. Those with many years until retirement have time on their side, giving markets the opportunity to bounce back. Finally, our chief investment officer, Dave Zellner, will be providing a more robust economic update and outlook that will be available on our website on October 20th. Thank you for your time today.